third speaker is Marcos Alexandrino from IMIUSP, that means Mathematical Institute of the University of Sao Paulo, who will lecture on singular Riemannian foliation, the semi-local model, and applications in analysis. It's always a pleasure to receive Marcos here. He was an undergraduate some time ago. Yes. So, Welcome, Marcos. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, before I start, I I would like to say that I'm very, very happy to be here and to have this possibility of participating in this Congress in honor to Padre Po. I will call it Padre Po, it's better. I'm sorry. <laughs> Padre Po. Uh, Padre Po was, in fact, my first math teacher in Calculus 1, actually. He gave me my first uh, uh, undergraduate stipendium and help me to find my undergraduate Anybody advisor. Right? And uh, also my master advisor, Ricardo Saert, he was my professor in manifolds in introductions to differential topology. He was my professor in foliations, actually. Before even the book of uh, Conlon, uh, been published. Uh, at that time, you are you are testing that, and uh, so you will be, you, you were part of our life. And uh, thank you very much, Paul, to be there for the entire process. Thank you. Thank you. So um, today I will briefly talk about this topic. It's uh, kind of my my not speciality, but uh, what what I have done here. Okay, so, okay, that's, that's better. <laughs> no, no problem. Harder, okay. Harder is online. So uh, today I would like to talk a little about this topic, more an uh, overview about singular Riemannian foliations, uh, stressing the so-called semi-local models, and say a few words on applications in analysis. It's based on these two papers with Marcelo, Mateus, Ivan, and other papers with Leonardo, Icaro, and I will say some words about something that we are doing today. So let's start with the definition. Um, with M here will always be a complete Riemannian manifold, okay? Then a partition of M into this, perfect, in this uh, immersed sub-manifold is called a uh, uh, singular foliation. If given for each leaf that you get, for each leaf, you take here a vector, then there exists uh, a vector field such that uh, extends V and it's always to the leaves. So this is a definition from Geometrical control theory, probably, it's very common. It uses the Sussman result and includes the definition of a regular foliation, okay? And we say that a foliation is Riemannian if uh, the leaves are equidistant. Or saying it another way, if you start here with a geodesk that starts orthogonal to a leaf, then it remains orthogonal for all t, future and past. Yes. This is what we call Riemannian. And uh, the first example that we have of a Riemannian foliation is partition of M into orbits of an isometric action. In that case, those vector fields are just the infinitesimal action. That means we just take here 
and apply to P, and T is equal to zero. Uh, so that is the first example. To see that is Riemannian is a nice exercise involving killing vector fields. There are infinite many examples of non-homogeneous singular Riemannian foliations already in Euclidean spaces and spheres. They are constructed using Clifford algebras and kind of generalized hop vibrations. So hop vibrations is a subcase of uh, the constructions of uh, Clifford algebras. And, but today I would like to stress a particular kind of example, the so-called uh, olonomy foliation. So uh, it appears uh, in every lecture of Riemannian geometry, uh, maybe directly or indirectly. So we start with, uh, um, we start with, uh, what? Ah, here. We start with a Riemannian, uh, Riemannian manifold, that this will be the basis. Then we have an Euclidean vector bundle over B, that means we have a metric that uh, in each fiber. And we have a metric connection, that means it is compatible with the, the product. So you can think, if you have a B, for example, you can think about the tangent space of B, or you have, if B is an embedded submanifold in Euclidean space, you can think you may consider the normal space of B. And then in that case, you consider the normal connections. And we will put here the so-called Sazaki metric on G that essentially is constructed like that. We have here our B. We ha make here, we have here curves, and here we make parallel transport of those curves. So the, the velocity of these curves induce here a distribution. So every time you have a connection, you have a, induced the distribution in your vector bundle. And now you define the metric along the fibers such that this guy turns to be an isometry. Uh, we, s we will define H orthogonal to the fiber. And uh, okay, and the metric in the fiber is the given metric. So, so that connection is quite common every time you think about the tangent space. The people who study this geodesics, there use that a lot. So, uh, and it is quite natural. Roughly saying, the Sazak metric is a metric, uh, the most natural metric in your fiber bundle, such that the foot projections turns to be an isometry, okay? Uh, of course, uh, you can always ask things. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Uh, it will be even funnier if you uh, make questions. So we define an allonomy by declaring that two vectors are in the same field same leaf, if you can connect one to the other via compositions of a parallel transport. So let us put a picture, a better picture than I can uh, draw. Here, you start here with your basis, here with your vector, and start making parallel transport of this vector. You can make here also a parallel transport, and the leaf will be a collection of all those parallel transport, okay? Um, in this second picture, you see an uh, interesting property of your foliation that uh, the, each leaf intersects a fiber and induces subfoliation on the fiber. The subfoliations are just orbits of the holonomy group. So every time you have a connection compactable with the metric, what is quite common, for example, in gauge theory or in minor manif uh, theory, you have, you, you may not use this name, but you have uh, this holonomy foliation. And the reason why this uh, singular foliation is in fact equidistant, is Riemannian, is essentially because the holonomy group are uh, uh, act by isometries in vector bundles. So roughly speaking, that is what is behind. Also the fact that the fibers turns to be totally geodesic with the Sazak metric. 
So this is then our example, interesting example that we should keep in mind along this talk, the allonomy foliation. Right, uh, oh, it's okay? So far so good? And uh, already in this example, we see something interesting that your foliation that may be singular, recall that B itself is a leaf, it's the zero section, null section of your foliation, and if your connection is not flat, the other leaf should be have bigger dimension than B. Uh, but uh, this uh, foliation induces a subfoliation in this transverse submanifold, and we'd like to to oh see, see. and we'd like to explore more this concept with a um, given uh, point P. We'll say call a slice the normal exponential map of the normal bundle of L. Fp will be just the intersection of your foliation with slice, and this guy, this Fp, is called an infinitesimal foliation, and it turns to be a singular Riemannian foliation with respect to the, the metric Gp. If you identify Sp via the normal exponential map with the tangent space. Okay, so the, that was in fact the case. Here we see a partition of a vector space into opts of an isometric group. So this is the first example. This is why your foliation is Riemannian here. And uh, this is a result that stay already in the book of Molino. And uh, now we'll give, uh, classify our foliations through some uh, properties of this infinitesimal foliation. We'll say that F is infinitesimal compact or infinitesimal closed if these leaves, this Fp, all the leaves are compact. We'll say that uh, F is infinitesimal homogeneous if this foliation is homogeneous, and uh, we'd say that uh, this is opt-like if it fulfills both conditions. So in the previous example, we have uh, then uh, infinitesimal foliation. So Olonomy foliation is a good example of a, a singular Riemannian foliation that is also infinitesimal homogeneous. There is a few cases where you have uh, the Olonomy group uh, that compact. For example, if you have the tangent, if A is the tangent space, then the Olonomy group is compact. If B is an embedded submanifold, then almost proved that this turned out also to be compact, okay? So this is a good example to keep, give in mind, and I will also need to recall this concept of groupoid. This will be a right language to deal with this kind of foliations. So, but let us recall this definition through an example. So consider here the, um, an action on manifold, and uh, a groupoid uh, will have different Objects. The first one will be a set of arrows. In this example, this will be GM. Uh, another manifold called this uh, object space. Okay. Uh, an orbifold will have uh, sources and the targets that they are submersions from G1 to G0. In this example, a source is just give you the point X and the target is the action of G and X. Uh, or before, should, uh, you should compose these arrows when this makes sense. So you have uh, two arrows. Uh, if the source of A is equal to the target of B, you can multiply those arrows. And uh, you have an uh, embedded map, the, the so-called unit map, and the uh, inverse map. So uh, in this very simple example of uh, an, a groupoid, you see that what the people of a groupoid theory define as orbit, that is the pre-image of source with the target, is in fact what we call in Riemannian geometry opts. So this is a good example to have in mind. And uh, a general groupoid should satisfy all those properties. I can give the formal definitions later, after my talk. But uh, I like this example. This, this put everything together. 
Another example that we should have in mind about groupoids is the holonomy groupoid. So now we start with an Euclidean vector bundle, again with a compactable connection. And uh, the arrows now are those maps, the, those parallel transport along the curves. Uh, the object set is just B. So the object set are just B. Source and the targets and multiplications are the most natural things. Source is the beginning of the curve, target is the end of the curve, and you can compose parallel transport when this makes sense. And uh, that is the identity, that is the inverse. The problem uh, is, uh, this is okay, this is an important uh, Lie groupoid, but uh, this uh, we needed to improve this because the opts of this groupoid is just B. So this is not quite interesting for us. We needed to consider this more general groupoid, the so-called transformation uh, Lie groupoid of the holonomy representation. That means simply that. We now instead consider B our set of objects. We consider the vectors in A. And the product, the arrows, are uh, parallel transports and the vectors that are compactable. And the sources, tags, and multiplications now are defined in the most natural way. Source is the, begin the vector. Target is the action of the holonomy in the vector. Multiplication is the compositions of your parallel transport. Unit and verse are well defined. And the important remark is our previous foliations are, comes from a Lie groupoid. So the, uh, the opts of this groupoid here are exactly the, the leaves the, of the holonomy foliation. So holonomy foliation is a good example of a singular Riemannian foliation. Holonomy foliation is a good example of a singular Riemannian foliation that is infinitesimal homogeneous. Holonomy foliation is a good example of a natural foliation that is associated with a Lie groupoid. Okay? And um, this maybe sounds a fancy language, but what is behind of this is the Ambrose Singer theorem. To prove that those things are in fact manifolds, you actually use the proof of the Ambrose Singer theorem. So, and uh, now, now our model. I want to, to construct a model that should describe singular Riemannian foliations at least in a neighborhood of a leaf. So again, we start with a vector bundle. This will be the normal bundle of a leaf. And uh, we assume that we have a connections and a Sazak metric here. But now we want, makes, we want to make our example of the holonomy foliation a little more complicated. Instead of to consider just a parallel transport of vectors, we are interested to transport an entire leaf. So what you have here is you have your fiber bundle, but now here you have already a foliation inside your fiber. Okay. And uh, this foliation should be somehow compatible with your geometry. That means this original foliation should be invariant by the holonomy. So instead here, it's no longer just vectors. I have already here some kind of foliation. And uh, this foliation may have uh, symmetries or not. Uh, as I told you, there are infinitely many non-homogeneous examples of uh, foliations in vector bundle. In, in Euclidean bundles, they are constructed by, uh, with Clifford algebras. It's a very nice construction, by the way. And the examples that we know, oh, everyone has a subfoliation that is homogeneous. There is an action that fixes uh, the leaves. So, but uh, theoretically, could appear some example that is high non-homogeneous without any symmetry. Anyway, we ha uh, I will just denote, in case we have symmetries, 
a subset Kp. And now I have a more of this example. Instead of to translate an in, a vector, you start to translate an entire leaf that is here, that's contained here. So translate this entire leaf. This is what I have called, uh, I don't know, G L C zero, or parallel transport, or every parallel transport along up. So now instead of to translate just vectors, you can translate these this, uh, this foliations. And you can always do something in between. Instead of to translate an entire foliation or translate a vector, you can rotate this vector and then translate. So essentially, you have this uh, subfoliations. One comes from the holonomy. The other is this somehow homogeneous, maximal homogeneous, and the other is your foliation. So this is, in some sense, the final foliation that you have. This is, in some sense, the large infinitesimal homogeneous that you have. So you, in this example, you have three, uh, two subfoliations. Okay. And why should I? care about that, why should I construct uh, something complicated? Because this is, in fact, a model. If you have a closed singular Riemannian foliation and uh, take a singular leaf, then you can find a tubular neighborhood. And the foliation in this saturated tubular neighborhood will just be diffeomorphic to this model. So every foliation is just take something that is, in fact, algebraic because we know that every Riemannian foliation in Euclidean space are prime images of polynomials. This is Lichik and Radesk. Uh, and then you just translate by some connections that is inside of the foliation. The maximal infinitesimal homogeneous of the foliation uh, is in fact diffeomorphic to this rotate and translate. So here, there is the so-called maximum infinitesimal homogeneous, and this is foliate, uh, diffeomorphic foliate to, to this guy. And in fact, this guy is, as kind of expected, a Lie groupoid. That means it is rotate and translate, admit a very strong structure that we should use soon. OK. OK, so far so good. Makes sense. And uh, we also have a model for the case where the singular Riemannian foliations are no longer clo uh, with closed leaves. In that case, I will not put the, 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 theo the details, but I can give the idea what happens. In the general case, what you have, you have uh, a saturated submanifold contained in stratum, for example, this guy could be a minimal stratum, maybe the closure of a leaf. So you have a foliation here, and you have your fibers, and you have a foliation in the basis. And uh, what happens in this case is that, again, you have uh, a kind of connection, but, not, uh, uh, but what we call a partial connection. You are allowed to make parallel transport but just along the leaves, not, uh, not in other directions. So you can make actually parallel transport, but just along the leaves. And uh, this is the so-called model two. And the model two describes uh, the general situation. So if you have a foliation and the FR are also diffeomorphic to something that we describe in model two, and the leaves are, in fact, opts of a Lie groupoid. Um, why this is important? Um, because this is essentially how Radesk and I proved the so-called Molyneux conjecture. That was this uh, interesting question that if you started with a foliation, a singular Riemannian foliation, if you take the closure of every leaf, if uh, this would be also a singular Riemannian foliation, in the sense that the closure should still be smooth. 
And we prove that uh, before this language, we prove that we find this uh, connection and uh, we put, um, we mix two, two tools. We mix this tool of the existence of a connection and we mix some uh, tools that was our previous study of uh, flows of isometries in metric space. How this problem of Berger, uh, Bredon, that how you, uh, if you can lift a flow of isometry, continual flows of isometry in the quotient that was uh, proved by Schwartz. And so we use this kind of technology, study of flow, smoothness of isometric flows in quotients and the existence of this connection tau. Even before we give those fancy names like ligropoids or models, so to understand this, this kind of foliation here was quite important because it contains the entire dynamic of the foliation. If you have a singular Riemannian foliations, the closure is described by a shift of transverse scaling vector fields. And to understand that, you need to understand this guy. So now that you have a complete description of this guy, you have a kind of a complete description of the dynamic of the semi-local dynamic behavior of, uh, of your singular Riemannian foliation. What is curious here is that uh, you can actually think that a, a little like the irrational actions on the torus. So you may have, uh, every time you have uh, your foliation B as closure of L, you may find uh, a properly gr groupoid that is closure and describe the closure of this leaf. This is a fancy way to talk about Molyneux conjecture, but uh, it seems also interesting for some applications, okay? So that was the model that I wanted to present, and uh, I would like to say a few words how those models can be used. So, our first application should be in main curvature flow. So, given a Riemannian manifold uh, and uh, an immersion, we say that a mean curvature flow is a family of immersions, okay? Such that each immersion satisfies this equation. Here I have simplified a little this definition. I'm assuming that these immersions are not self it has not self intersections, but so for our purpose, this will be okay. And H is the mean curvature of a leaf. So you can think, at least I think uh, people of Riemannian geometry think like that, or actions think like that. You can think, for example, uh, cylinders or you can act. have here your surface, you have here your main curvature flow, and you want to try to follow your main curvature flow and see the, fa the possible families that you get following this, this, this flow. This can be quite complicated in general. It is already complicated in Euclidean space in an arbitrary Riemannian manifold, this can be very hard. But when you have foliations, when you have symmetries, one should expect the questions quite more easily. And that is the kind of questions that I want to discuss. Uh, in the situation when we have a foliation, consider here a singular Riemannian foliation, and we will assume that the, this vector field is basic uh, with respect to a foliation. So, you have here our foliation, you have here our vector field in the regular stratum, okay? And uh, here you have uh, your local quotient, and um, uh, this could induce here also vector fields if you just consider the regular part, assume that the leaves are uh, are um, closed. If you can consider the regular stratum, principal stratum, then you have a flow, uh, vector fields 
in an orbifold or if it is principal vector fields in, um, in a manifold. So this is a natural example to consider the so-called generalized isoparametric foliation. First of all, because it, it includes the partition of M into orbits. Every time you have an isometric action, this turn out to be, has this property. This is a simple exercise. You can find that in books, like even in my book with Renato Betiol, 2015, uh, Lee groups and uh, isometric actions. Uh, isoparametric foliations, this is an old topic that start with Cartan. Those, uh, every singular Riemannian foliation is an Euclidean space, sphere, or projectable space, and the examples of model one. So we have here several examples where um, you have a mean curvature, flow, uh, mean curvature vector field, at least in the principal part, that project to a vector field in this part. So we, instead to deal with a complicated partial differential equation, we start to deal with vector fields that may be defined in a metric space. So it's even easier to deal with the vector fields in metric space than partial differential equations sometimes. So the strategy is now we are dealing with the dynamic behavior of uh, vector fields in some metric space. This is a manifold, but this guy does not so just space, and we are trying to understand the behavior of those vector fields in this metric space. And um, I would like to talk about this, uh, this first application of this model. This is a generalization of a paper with the Radesk and I. Uh, in a previous paper, Radesk and I studied the case where you have a uh, generalized isoparametric foliation in a compact manifold. This turns out to be a generalization of a paper of a turn published in Duke 2006, I, I don't remember, where she studied the only isoparametric that are uh, roughly speaking polar foliations, that, are, that means the normal space are integrable, that is, Roughly speaking, the quotient are uh, good odd folds. It's not completely true, but uh, okay, th that will be. So, and then Radesk and I uh, proved the start, uh, stirred the isoparametric foliations in compact manifolds. Much the, the main idea was actually from Radesk. He came to me with a with the study of. Uh, those Riemannian foliations in a sphere, and I, I just helped to generalize that for manifolds, bases of attractions, and things like that. But that was a very clever idea. The, the paper used uh, focal points uh, in this metric space and Sturm-Leuville to understand the, the, focal, the, the Jacob fields in metric space. But anyway, the problem was uh, this kind of result in compact is okay, but it does not solve the situations that the people, for example, in Compostela studied, where they are concerned about a non-positive curvature. There are, we are, oh, appear, appear several examples of isoparametric submanifolds appear nowadays in non-positive non curvature. And so we have to deal with that. So we, start, we use this tau connection to study this situation where the leaves are no longer compact, the quotient is compact, or you are very close, or you are very close to a singular leaf. If you are very close to a singular leaf, this turns out to be a base of attraction. If you start there, you stay there. You can, uh, this is one of the results that you have if you are in a tubular neighborhood and uh, follow the mean curvature flow, you should stay always in this tubular neighborhood. So you can use what I have written here also for Riemannian foliations in non-positive curvature, in non-negative curvature. And what you have then, 
First, the leaves converge to each other, at least in the leaf space sense. Uh, if the curvature of M is bounded and the shape operator along each leaf is bounded, for example, this happens every time when you have uh, actions, the shape operator along R orbit is bounded, then the flow actually converts point, point, point wise. And the conversion is the better kind of conversion that exists in this theory. It is so-called the singularity of type one. Already in this example, you see you are getting the cylinder is smaller and smaller. That means the principal curvature getting bigger and bigger. The main curvature will explode, but you control the explosion and like that. So we are essentially saying that explosions of main curvature uh, flows for singular Riemannian foliations with the closed the leaves and the basic mean curvature are controlled and are essentially like cylinders. That is the idea. Okay. We have also a result for um, that this result actually use model one to study this kind of thing. And uh, you can actually use model two if you want to understand the flow of the leaves that are not compact. The leaves that are not closed, uh, the closure of a leaf has one main curvature vector field, but this not coincide with the curvature of the, the leaf itself. So you need to use uh, the model two. And I would like to end this talk, talk about another kind of application. So this was the application of model one. We have a kind of model two in the case when the leaves are not closed, then you may have to follow the mean curvature of uh, a non-closed leaf, but it does not, uh, it, this does not coincide with the mean curvature flow of the closure. And uh, to end in this last two minutes, I would like to talk how one, we want to use, uh, for example, this fancy language of Lie group points to use a problem of a vari calculus of variations. There is this nice paper of Palais that talk about symmetries and uh, let me uh, just read that in this context. Consider a linear functional. Here is the M will always be, no, no, here in this case M is any, anything but you are consider com, uh, compact functions with the compact support. Then we say this function, linear function is symmetric if this property holds. If, although f is not basic, if you compose that by what we call linearized vector field, that is essentially translate and rotate and composed by exponential math, when you compose by those special vector fields, this guy must be equal to this. Uh, then we have this nice lemma that generalized the lemma of Palais that say that, well, if, you, if your symmetric functional is zero for basic functions, then this must always be zero. Let me, I'm almost finished. I think it's okay with the time. But let us just recall uh, this simple example. So assume that you have a vector space an action on a vector space, and assume that you have here your stratum of a fixed point. You say that uh, a map, J, J is a G invariant if uh, G action X or small x is just G, okay? In this uh, scenario, it's quite simple to see that uh, the, the gradient, the derivative here, um, I will put gradient here, just to make this more calculus too. Uh, the gradient here must be tangent to the stratum of a fixed point because it has symmetry. Gradient indicates the directions where the functions get bigger and you can rotate this vector field so it does not have any component, it's tangent to the minimal stratum. 
So when you have uh, these kind of things, we have uh, representations to looking for critical points, you just uh, in uh, point P, to see that this is in fact zero, it's just uh, enough to analyze the derivative of this guy, the derivative of this guy along the stratum of a fixed point. Now, uh, consider that this guy is, in fact, a space of functions. So your action here is, if you have an action, would be this guy. Or maybe this, it depends how left or right you want to, to do. So this is essentially what I'm saying, what are discussing here. <coughs> Uh, this symmetry, this invariant, and uh, we actually want to study critical points of uh, some uh, action uh, associated with some Lagrangian. So we take uh, some Lagrangian here that is symmetric, that is invariant by this very special flow called the linearized flow, and we are looking for critical points of a uh, we are looking for critical points of jots. This is our L. This uh, includes several kinds of partial differential equations. One is from the um, Yamabe problem, appears like that. Another is every P Laplacian and the generate generalizations of a P Laplacian appear like that. So we want to study, for example, uh, conditions such that the Yamabe problem uh, preserve the symmetry. Uh, start with the uh, foliation, get uh, a, a curvature, with constant scalar curvature, such that uh, the foliation is still Riemannian. And so we have to deal with this kind of functional. So right now what you are doing is you, you are using the Lie group structure to, to deal with this kind of things. We integrate along sources this proof here is uh, based on the theory of Lie group points. We make integrations along sources to have this kind of things. And we hope to deal with this, at least these two class of foliations, foliations in fiber bundles, and those called the oft-like isoparametric foliations. For example, isoparametric foliations of co-dimension one. Right now, it's I'm checking details on this second class, but uh, it seems it uh, fulfilled the necessary conditions. That is, the normal space is preserved, and uh, this measure here is also preserved, at least uh, until right now it seems to work. So that was. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, happy birthday, Paul. Thank you, Marcos. Are there any questions? No questions? So let's thank our speaker again. Thank you.